Hey friends, welcome back. Today I have a video for you of just a quick project that you can make for yourself or for a friend if you want to decorate for the holidays with a little bit of Genshin flair. Today I'm going to go through how to make Genshin Impact stockings. I've put together two different stockings, one with applique and one using heat transfer vinyl. So I'm hoping between the two of them I can give you some good easy options for the materials you may have available to you immediately. For my examples, I made one for Zhongli and one for Child. I'm hoping that with these you'll get some good ideas to maybe make some custom ones of your own for your favorite character. This wasn't quite the video I was planning on putting out next. I've been working really hard on editing my Halloween Rena cosplay video and it just isn't there yet. So I wanted to be sure that I could give you guys just a quick little treat in between that and our next unboxing video. So without further ado, here is how to make a Genshin Impact holiday stocking. As far as materials go, you really don't need much to make these. You can start with about a half a yard of cotton or similar sturdy fabric, and then an eighth a yard of your accent fabric. I'm using vinyl. You'll also need some heat and bond light. Be sure you get the one in the pink packaging that says sewable. If you're not making the applique stocking, you'll need some heat transfer vinyl in your color of choice. And finally, you'll need about a quarter of a yard of fabric for the top of the stocking. You could use this fur, like I have here that I used for child stocking, or uh, I even used some vinyl scales for Zhongli's. So what I'm going to do first is just make my template out of scrap cardboard. I had some extra boxes just kicking around my garage from miscellaneous Amazon purchases, so I just draw out a rough draft of how big I think the stocking should be. Um, the great thing about using cardboard like this for any of your test patterns is that you can really easily edit it or make another one if you need to, because um, this is just like <laughs> half of the box. So I'm just drawing out my stocking and kind of feeling where everything should be and how big I really want them to be. And then I just take my scissors and cut the pattern out. Real easy, you don't need anything fancy to cut through this cardboard, and it's pretty quick too. Once the pattern is free from the rest of the cardboard, I'm actually able to take it and size it up to my fabric to make sure it's sitting well. And you can actually see that it's maybe a half of that half a yard even. You don't need a ton of fabric to do this, you just really need two pieces. So I'm going to start by cutting this out of my blue fabric here, and I'm going to trace around my cardboard piece and leave just about a finger's width of seam allowance. I found that I can eyeball this pretty well, but um, if you if you just give it give it a little bit of room, then you'll have space to sew. What I do first here, though, is I just cut away the rest of the material because I find it's easier to manage when you have less going on on your desk. This is a roll of, I think, like three yards of fabric and I just needed a little bit. So you can see me going around here and drawing my seam allowance because the stocking is the size that I want that template. I am going in and I'm going to cut this out of my black fabric too. I am going to make two stockings. I guess you already know that though. This one I'm just going for broke and like cutting it out uh, by eyeballing it. If you want to live dangerously, this is also an option, but I can't promise you that your pattern will stay put. Um, but you know, sometimes you're in a hurry. Um, so the next thing I did is I printed out the geo symbol for the first stocking that we're going to make, which is the applique stocking. And please ignore my bad printer lines. I need to clean the nozzles on my printer, but I, I printed this out on cardstock, so I can actually cut out the geo symbol from 
this piece of paper and use it as a template to draw onto the vinyl applique that we're going to make. And this process actually has a ton of great cosplay uses. So if you see like a bunch of gold detailing and stuff on a character you want to cosplay, you can pretty much use the same method to make those details. So with my GeoSimple cut out there, um, I'm just sizing it up to my vinyl and I had this as scrap in my closet from another project. I think maybe Raftalia is what I got this from. Um, but then I just plop it onto the heat and bond light and size that up, trim it out. I'm going to just take my iron and press these together so it sticks to the back side of this vinyl. And I don't want any of that sticky stuff on the edges getting on my ironing board, so just be sure to trim that up really well. So next I'm just taking this water soluble pen and I'm going to trace the geo symbol out onto the back of that heat and bond now that I've actually ironed it to my fabric. And this makes cutting this out of that vinyl really easy and it basically turns this into like a big sticker. So you can see I've got my pattern here and then I just cut it out with my scissors. This is so satisfying, it just squished. <laughs> and then I can basically just line it up on that black stocking. Put it exactly where I want it to be and peel off the back. And then the next step is just to iron it onto the fabric. I did decide to place it just a little bit farther down though. I, I decided if you put it up near the stocking bit, then you might lose the detail when you fold over the top. Just line that up real carefully and iron it down. And this is it ironed down. You can see that it actually holds really well with just a little bit of a press from that heat. But we're actually going to take this one step further. You could totally stop here if you wanted to, um, but I am going to actually zigzag stitch around the whole edge of the geo symbol. It makes it just a little bit more sturdy, and I think it looks really nice and clean. One thing of note here, um, I am sewing on top of vinyl, which can be pretty sticky. So if I had a normal sewing foot, I might be struggling a little bit to get this fabric to actually move through my machine. But I'm using a non-stick foot right now, and I can put a link to that in the bio too. And it makes sewing over vinyl like super, super smooth and super wonderful. Like the the difference is night and day. So really big, really big recommend on the sewing foot. And uh, also be sure you're using the right needle. Um, if you're using the wrong needle, you will also probably have a very bad time with this. So two two things to think about. And here it is! Oh, this is so satisfying. This is one of the better, like, appliques I think I've had come out of my machine. I was so happy that that vinyl really, really sits nicely with this. And that's it. The next thing that I had to do was just assemble the stocking and sew the right sides together. Now, although this fabric is, like, super sturdy, it's also pretty slippery. Um, I certainly could. I mean, if you have a cotton, I don't know if you even need to pin these. They hold together pretty well, but because this is slippery and I didn't quite trust it, I just put a couple pins around the outside of the stocking just to hold it in place and make sure that I didn't get anything too misaligned if I started running it through my sewing machine and it, like, started to slip. Things can kind of slide out of control pretty fast if you're not careful. This is kind of a bonus step, but I noticed this kind of softer fabric was fraying quite a lot. Um, if you wanted to get some fray check and just put along those edges, that would stop that ahead of time and just let this piece last a little bit longer. Um, some pinking shears would actually work for the same thing. I happen to have a serger, so I just put the stocking through my serger and closed up all those edges. This is completely optional though, and if you're using a cotton fabric, you really shouldn't have this problem at all. I was just using some remnants from my cosplay stash. 
there, there you can see the stitch, that nice overlock on the edge, just keeping everything in check. And there's our stocking all together. Now, I did need to iron the edges of this. You can see it's kind of puffy, but I overlock stitched that top too, just so it would stay put. Ugh, I'm so happy with that applique, oh my gosh. So the next thing I needed to do was just put the scales on that top edge. And I was really excited about this fabric. So I bought this fabric when I was working on my Zenogre cosplay in 2019, and I didn't actually find a use for it. Um, but I thought it'd be perfect for Zhongli's stocking. I kind of want to find another way to incorporate it for like some kind of Genshin thing, but ugh, yeah, this is the perfect like dragony gold scale use for uh, the good, the good Geo friend. So for the top lining of this stocking, that band around the top, you really don't need much fabric at all. I would say if you were buying new fabric yourself, you could probably do just like a quarter of a yard and you'd still have leftovers, um, which is great because if you're getting fake fur or even something like this, they can be kind of expensive. Um, I would maybe even say look at the remnants at your uh, shopping store, <laughs> your haberdashery, whatever you want to call it. Um, but what I did is I just took this strip and I lined it up to the top of my stocking and gave myself that little bit of extra seam allowance on each side. This one was already connected on this side so I didn't have to worry about it over there. It was just on the other side that I needed to watch it and cut it out. So you can see me lining it up here and then just cutting straight up the top of the stocking. Ignore the bruise on my arm. I don't know why that's there. I don't know how that got there. Um, yeah, uh, with that all sized up, then I just turned it and put the right sides together so I could sew a French seam here. And I'm just doing the same about fingers width seam allowance. It took me a hot minute to figure this out, but you basically have to put your stocking inside out and have the opening out of the top of the back of like that top ring. So you turn it inside out, you put your stocking in there inside out, and then you sew that edge together. Um, and once that's sewn together, then you can flip that top band around right side out, and you will have that top cuff of the stocking. I swear I had to, I had to stare at this for like three minutes and be like, wait, did I actually attach that? properly. It's a little weird. It's a little weird, but on the bright side, if you make a mistake, it is a very, very small mistake and you can either seam rip it or you'll probably have enough material to fix it super easily if you've somehow managed to ruin your material. But there you have it. There is Zhongli's stocking. The only other thing that I needed to add was the little loop at the top. And I decided that I was just going to use that same gold scale fabric and make a loop out of kind of, I think it was about a half an inch or so. And all I did for that top loop was just cut that strip out and then overlap it with each other. And I top stitched that to the corner of the cuff of our stocking just kind of on the inside you won't really see that top stitch anyway since the the cuff covers it so i think this is plenty fine even for this scaly kind of vinyl material that top stitch line hid pretty well on the front and the back it's really well hidden i just used a gray thread and it seemed to do the job I was honestly so happy with the stocking, like, oh, oh. So next up was child stocking. And so I started by cutting out his uh, hydro emblem there. And for this one, we are going to try a different method. The stocking construction itself will be more or less the same. But as far as getting this emblem on there, we are going to use heat transfer vinyl. I wanted to give you guys some options for how this could be accomplished a few different ways, and we're going to keep this super low tech. So while I do have a Cricut machine and I could put that through there, I'm going to show you just how you can make a template 
and cut this out yourself. No reason to, uh, to buy a $300 machine if you don't have to, right? So just tape your heat transfer vinyl down and then tape your template over that. And you want to make sure this is taped down really well so that they don't budge because what we're going to do is take our X-Acto knife and just cut around the inside of that template. And if that stays put, then we'll just be left with a nice cutout shape that we can adhere to the stocking fabric with our iron. And this, it takes a couple of minutes. Fair warning, fair warning. It might not cut perfectly the first time. You might have to work at this a little bit, but that's okay. Um, it's still a pretty short term project and you could knock this stocking out in, you know, a couple hours or maybe even less if you're inexperienced. And if you ever want to check how this is lining up, you can just keep that top piece of tape right there. Flip your template up and see how you're doing. If you need to work on it a little bit more, because that uh, template is still taped to the table, because your heat transfer vinyl is still taped to the table in the exact same spot, you can just flip that right back down and keep cutting. For me, I was able to see that pretty much all of the shape that I needed was there and easy to see. I just needed to trim some of the smaller points to get it all the way out. And then it was free! You can see if I flip that back down, because it's still taped in place, it lines up just right. So it's a great option if you don't have like a Cricut or anything like that, you can still utilize heat transfer vinyl. So after that, I just had to line that up on the stocking where I wanted it. And I put it on my ironing board and put just a little piece of fa like scrap fabric over it. Put my iron down and let it sit for a couple seconds. And there it was. The next thing that I had to do was just peel off that plastic layer on top. But that was pretty much it. Also, side note, I found out that my camera had a sports mode during filming all of this. <laughs> so if anything seems a little weird, like, huh, this feels like almost slow motion. It's because I accidentally filmed it in like super slow-mo in sports mode and didn't realize it until I was editing this. So, woo, go me. But once that had cooled off, I went through and I sewed the stocking together. I surged all the edges on this too. And then I peeled off the top layer of that heat transfer vinyl. If you're doing this and you notice that your vinyl is starting to pick up like it didn't fully adhere, um, just go back, put the iron on it again, let it cool and try it. So then all that was left was to attach the fur top to child's stocking. Uh, the fur top and then the little loop too. I used a pretty similar process to Zhongli's where I just put it at the top of the stocking and sized it up accordingly. Um, this time I just put a couple of pins in the top to keep an eye on where I wanted that because this fur is kind of fluffy and tricky. But once I got it all together, I just lined it up the same way with that stocking inside out. and sewed it together. You can see that weird little lip from where I sewed these together where you basically have the right side facing the wrong side of the stocking itself. So once you have that all together, you can flip that top cuff over and then it's time to add the band to hang it up. This time I opted for some more gold vinyl. This is some bias tape that I actually got from Joann's. You only really need maybe about four inches or so of this. Whatever you choose really. It could be ribbon, it could be another little tube of fabric or some bias tape. The world is your oyster for this one, but I thought the gold would look nice. Just fold it over like that and top stitch it down to the top of that stocking. 
Now, this is kind of tricky with the fur because it's so thick, you've got to go slow and kind of help it through. So if you're using fur, just take your time and make sure everything's sitting like you want it to. And there you have it, just top stitch to the back of the stocking like this, and it holds really well. It actually hides really well in the fur too, you can't even tell that it's there. And just like that, our stockings are done. <laughs> one Zhongli stocking and one child stocking. Now I just need to find something good to put inside them. I think childs need some chopsticks for sure. Maybe could get some of that gold chocolate money for Zhongli. <laughs> but yeah, that's it. That's how to make a couple quick, easy stockings with a couple different materials options. Hopefully this has given you some ideas to make your own or make a quick gift for someone before the holidays are over. But thank you so much for giving me your time today. I appreciate having you here. Um, the next cosplay unboxing video is coming really soon. I actually just got Ball in the mail and I am so excited to share her. It, it's a good one. It's a really good one. Um, but in the meantime, I am going to keep trying to finish that Rena video. My hope is that I can finish her before the new year, but we'll see. Either way, thank you so much for giving me your time today. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and hopefully I will have something new for you soon. But until next time, take care.